The bee danced within its glass jar prison, and the embers in the fire died to dull orange and gray. Bugbear, the keeper of goblin wisdom and culture, pulled his blanket about him and drew in his arms and legs, huddling into a ball on the forest floor. He considered warming himself with a cup of bandaberry root tea, but the fire was far too low. Tudmire would need to return with firewood soon, or there would be no fire left to rekindle. Now sleep tugged at his heavy head. Sleep, dreaded sleep, where the dreams were alive and angry, where faces danced before him, mouths pulled into screams, and eyes wet with tears. The dreams, oh, how they had tormented him. Dark visions clouding his mind, sinister whispers filling his ears, unspeakable terrors clotting his blood. And yet it was the dreams that inspired him to search for the lost ruins of Whittlegrip's monastery. It was the dreams that sent him on his scholarly journey into the study of non-logical thought. And it was the dreams that brought him here, huddled in the forest at night before a dying fire, a bee in a jar, his only companion. As the bee's buzzing drilled into his head, fitful slumber fell upon him, like an assassin, killing him a thousand times. Dark shapes slithered and slunk. Evil voices bellowed and shrieked. He wandered alone in a world of gray, a colorless landscape stretching to the limits of his sight. In the sky above, images formed, dim and dreary like drawings etched in mud. He saw an archer drawing her bow against an unseen foe, and he saw an animal loping along upright like a goblin, and he saw something even stranger, a monstrous face, obscure and unclear, yet somehow important, somehow burnt into his skull. This image forced Bugbear's dreaming mind to recall an illustration of an odd and forgotten race that he had seen in one of his books of ancient lore. They were called humans, and a more ridiculous myth he had seldom studied. The three images then turned to him and pointed, speaking as one. You should wake up. The game has begun. With a gasp and a shudder, Bugbear found himself awake. The fire was rekindled, and Tudmire had returned with three unexpected guests. Large people, ten feet tall, pale purple skin, big warty ears, small red eyes, long spotty noses, ogres. Tutmeyer crouched with them before a Nogglestone's board, moving pieces here and there. The ogres watched on with dumb amusement, a bag of copper coins on the ground beside them. Gambling, Buckbear hissed. Bugbear threw his blanket aside, tucked the bee jar into his coat of many pockets, and stormed over to his cousin. Tudmire, he barked. I sent you for fuel, not for fools. Tudmire turned back to Bugbear and waved him off. Shush, you mouthy mouse, I'm about to win. And with a surprisingly nimble movement of his thick fingers, Tudmire slid his three white stones over the opposing black stone. Ha, he blurted, I'm the Noggle Lord. He stood and danced about the bewildered ogres and the grumbling bugbear. His voice reached high into the night, filling the air with echoes of laughter and gloating. Then he stopped before the ogres, holding out his hand and smiling with all the teeth he could muster. My winnings, if you please. The ogres shrugged as one. The largest passed the bag and a yellowed scroll over to Tudmire. Goodly gaming's little gobbling, he said with a smile. Thanks you for the invitings. Tudmire swept into a deep bow before the ogres. My pleasure. Unlike some goblins, I appreciate and enjoy the company of ogres. As Tudmire rose, several black, white, and gray stones tumbled out of his sleeves. He stood for a moment in the light of the campfire, sheepish and uncertain. Cheaterings, the largest blurted as he overturned the board and sent stones showering into the air. Cheaterings, the other two shouted. Smasherings, the largest yelled as he advanced on the trembling Tudmire. Run, you fool, Bugbear commanded as he took Tudmire by the hand and pulled him off into the thick tangles of brush. 